Our fifth grade students have taken on an exciting challenge, building robots from scratch while mastering the fundamental concepts of sensors, processors, and motors. Moving forward, we are thrilled to establish a robotics team that will represent our school in national and international robotics competitions. This will enable them to immerse themselves in the culture of coding, explore the concepts of AI, and prepare themselves to embrace the ever-evolving advancements of science and technology. We are dedicated to equipping the next generation of innovators with the skills and knowledge necessary to tackle the challenges of tomorrow. I now call upon Master Abhilash Pratipati and team to come forth and showcase their skills in assembling the humanoid and a cute little penguin live right here in front of his, this August gathering. The stage is set for you kiddos. Bring it on. Namaste to one and all. We have three teams here who are about to embark on building two robots right in front of your eyes. Let's begin. Building a robot as a team requires exceptional coordination, effective collaboration, and a significant amount of individual expertise. It is important to know that building a robot involves both hardware and software. Today, we will witness the teams building the robots from scratch. All the required parts are laid out on these tables for the teams to access. They are using Allen keys, 12-inch U-channels, and L-beams. This team has started in integrating the motors onto the chassis. At the primary by which a robot motors can to drive a robot around and cause joints to move. They are now mounting a rectangular plate with a brain onto the chassis. The brain is the core processor of the robot. It can be programmed using a special software. It has a processing unit which takes signals from sensors, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connections. It has 10 RJ11 ports for interfacing with other components. The chassis is a base frame of a car, carriage or other wheeled vehicles. It is analogous to the skeleton of a human body. The chassis serves as the robot skeleton, so it is essential to have a well-designed and well-assembled one. The success or the failure of a robot depends on the chassis. Some real-life uses of robots are in the medical industry, in the education industry, and for daily routines. In the education industry, robots can teach children without the risk of injury. Medical robots can treat the sick without, during the pandemic times. And entertainment robots can use animatronic toys to entertain big audiences. This team is now assembling an L-beam to the base. This L-beam is providing support to the front wheel to enable smooth movement. As each team gets to work, we can see that they are communicating with each other, dis discussing their progress and challenges. They are helping out each other by sharing tools and techniques. The, this team is now attaching cables to the motors to the brain so that the motors can move properly. With the chassis complete for this team, they are now going to start with the lower part of the body. They are now aligning the frame of the body to the chassis. It takes a lot of expertise and hard work to align the frame. In the frame, there are 
four foam boards, three with cutouts of ultrasonic sensors. Ultrasonic sensors use high frequency sound waves or ultrasonic waves to detect the distance between the sensor and an object. The sensor then calculates the distance based on the time it takes for the signals to go back to the sensor. They are now going to align the frame. This team is now inserting their ultrasonic sensors into the robot. And they are also connecting it using RJ11 connectors. So more real life uses of robots can be for daily routines. Suppose you want to clean a big area. You can use robots to clean it. If you want to navigate your way, you can also use robots to do that. And this table contains the upper part of the body with a head on it. This magnetic head can be attached and can also be taken off at any time. Ultrasonic sensors are also a key to the robot as it functions completely on the robot. There is a special code for the robot so that the front ultrasonic sensor senses for any obstruction and then if there is any obstruction in front of it, it will check its left and right directions. If all three directions are blocked, it will go backwards. And there are also functions for it. If there is no obstruction in the front direction, it will move at a high speed. However, if there is an object but further away from the robot, it will move at a medium speed. This team is still aligning the frame to the robot. This team is also aligning their frame to the robot. Both these robots are different. This one is having a, a bigger body and this one is a penguin. along with continuous speed motors, which both the teams have integrated to the chassis, there are also servo motors, which cause joints in a robotic limb or arm to move. These servo motors can also position the robot. And there are also many other types of, of motors, apart from continuous speed motors, which which go in continuous motion and servo motors which go in positional motion this team is now assembling big wheels or wheels using spacers and shaft stoppers these spacers are used so that the wheels do not collide with the metal parts and it will make the movement smoother smoother the shaft stoppers are used to stop the wheel from sliding off the shaft and to provide sturdy and proper movement on stable platforms. Using Allen keys, this team can tighten the frame of the robot. There are also test objects which will be used later for testing the robot. This team's robot is now completed, but before they can test the robot, they need to cross-check the robot for any errors or omissions. Once the cross-checking is complete, they will take their test object and they will place the robot on the ground, switch the brain on and test the robot in every direction. Once switched on the brain, the robot will start moving in a continuous motion. And if there is any object in front of the front ultrasonic sensor, the robot will come to a halt and will either move in the left or right direction. Their cross-checking is now complete and they will place the robot down to test the robot. A 
Another real life use of robots is in the manufacturing industry. Many companies use these robots or robotic arms to reduce precision, time and effort. With these robots, those companies can make productions faster. Once the cross-checking is done, they have now put their robot down, switched the brain on, and have their test object ready to test the robot. Once switched the brain on, the robot is now moving. And the test object placed in front of the front ultrasonic sensor, and it's coming to a halt. It's then checking for the left and right directions. But if all directions are blocked, it will go backwards. Like how they place the chest object in front of the robot, the robot comes to a halt. But if all sides are blocked, it's going to go backwards, just as programmed in the code. This team has finished the lower part of the body and they are coming to assemble the upper part. This upper part has a wooden hand and another hand with a bow on it. Another real life use of robots is in the recycling industries. These robots can sort out plastics or waste based on their colors. These are color sorting machines. Apart from ultrasonic sensors, there are also many other types of sensors, such as sound sensors, which will move based on the sound, touch sensors, with the touch we can move the robot. This is a full 2.0 brain. It has five sensor ports, four motor ports, and one remote controlled port. This remote controlled port is used so that without directly programming the robot, we can connect the remote controller to the port and then run the robot. Four of these motor ports are advanced ones. The M1 port is a basic port and S3, S4 and S5 are all advanced ports. Once done with the upper part of the body, this team is now assembling wheels using the fillers and the shaft stoppers. Once this is all finished, they will assemble the magnetic head onto the upper part of the body. This team needs to replace their axle lock now. This is the planned body of this robot. This is the lower part of the body and the upper part is designed so that there are two arms. The lower part of the body is depending on the chassis. So we can say that the success or the failure of the robot depends only on the chassis. In the lower part of the body, there are three foam boards with cutouts of ultrasonic sensors. On the upper part, there is a cylindrical magnetic part which we can insert a magnetic head onto. These are the parts used to make this robot. There is a base, a continuous speed motor, RJ11 connectors, wheels, three ultrasonic sensors, a rectangular plate, shafts, shaft stoppers, a full 2.0 brain, a frame, and the upper part of the body, and the foam boards.
this team has now finished cross-checking their robot and they will now test the robot using their test object. This is the outcome of the two robots. This is the penguin bot and this bot is slightly larger than it. One switch is on the brain, the robot is now moving. Using their test object, they are able to stop the robot in each direction. And, use, and stopping the test object in front of the ultrasonic sensor, the robot comes to a halt. These robots are developed by a school and designed by us. Thank you all, that's all for today. The innovators of the future, ladies and gentlemen, please give them a loud round of applause. I saw a Joseph Engelberger, a Hiroshi Ishiguro, Rodney Brooks, a Cynthia Brazil, and maybe a Mark Tilden too, in our young team here. With the field of robotics is constantly evolving. There are many exciting developments and breakthroughs still to come. Awesome children, absolutely awesome. Thank you, my dears.